What up, Sea of Red? You're listening to Into the Flames, a Calgary Flames fan podcast. Your home for all things Flames and updates around the NHL. With your hosts, Raja Burry and Noah Eppleston. Into the Flames. New episodes every Sunday. The ping pong battle, which I like to call it in terms of leapfrogging, is between the Flames and Oilers. Uh, yeah, and, and Seattle's right there too. So, yeah, and uh, all all within a point of each other. And I mean, like the Kraken get a little bit more of an advantage because they've got three games in hand. So, right. obviously, you have to win those three games. But just because of that cushion they have, they immediately have like a it's like parking in two spots. But yeah, this video is going to be a little bit different. We're going to be giving you our 2023 New Year's resolutions for the Flames instead of our usual just game review conversation. That way our content doesn't start getting redundant. We start giving you new stuff. So my first New Year's resolution for the Flames, fix the power play. Okay, yeah, that, that's a great New Year's resolution to have for sure. Um, that might be my favorite New Year's resolution. The Mueller play is, I'm about done with it. I, I don't know about you, but I don't think the Mueller play is, is working here in Calgary. Yeah, my, um, my, the second half of that resolution was let go of Kirk Mueller in the offseason. <laughs> so I don't know if that's like too aggressive. No, it's just a fact. Sorry, <laughs> Kirk. I'm sure you're a great guy, but the power play just isn't it. Clearly that's not in the cards. So fix the power play. The Flames occupied the second wild card spot through 40 games last season. It's almost an identical situation. We'll get into the goals for goals against in a bit, which obviously differs. But yeah. from like a standings perspective, it's almost an identical situation right now, minus us being spoiled by the greatest top line that the league has seen in the in a regular season over the past 30 years. You want to compare apples to apples? This is the apples to apples comparison that you've got to look at. It's starting to get to that time where like you got to put it together now. Yeah. Like no, we, we always talk about like coming out of the Christmas break, like this yeah. is make it or break it hockey that yeah. we are coming into right here. So it's, yeah, you this season is not a wash, but you got to step up and uh, I'm going to run my, one of my uh, new year's resolutions off this. Um, I think every flames fan this new year is just hoping for some run support. Can we score some goals, please? Yeah. Like, I don't care if it's on the power play. I don't care if it's shorthanded. I don't care if it's five on five. Can we just score some goals, please? Exactly. Because you, you look at the last five, ga- six games that the Flames have played in. Not a single game is over a three-goal game. Almost every score is 3-2 other than the Oilers' 2-1 loss. So that's... That's definitely one of my New Year's resolutions for sure. 100%. And then just to add to your point, through 39 games, if you don't count empty net goals or overtime winners, this year the Flames have 111 goals for, 106 goals against. Last year at this time, 116 goals for. So goals for is close. Even though it feels like scoring more goals is the sexy fix, we only surrendered 86 goals against in comparison to the 106 that we have at this point in time. Tighten up defensively. Last few games, I feel like they genuinely have been getting better at that. The trend has been positive there. Absolutely. But my New Year's resolution to add to your point is tighten up defensively. So between scoring goals and tightening up defensively, basically just fix the way you play hockey. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm getting at here with the New Year's resolutions. It's uh, <laughs> every aspect of this team's game <laughs> needs to be fixed. <laughs> oh my God. Adding on to that, I think there has to be a point where, as fans, we got to stop targeting certain guys on this team when overarchingly the fundamental root of the problem is and always has been roster construction and the lack of depth around the guys making the big money. That was that was one of my uh, New Year's resolutions as well. Uh, mine was more focused on goaltenders. I just want our fans to be level-headed with our goaltenders because I'm sick and tired of the hot and cold fans on goalies. But, um, yeah, that's one of mine too, pretty much. Elias Lindholm, a finally drop your hair and skin routine. That's my next uh, New Year's resolution. Didn't both uh, Marky and Lindholm get engaged? 
Yes. Like this Christmas, pretty much. Yeah. Yes. I thought so. You gave me Johnny and Monty vibes when they. Yeah. Yeah. You think that was like organized? That had yeah. to be organized. Those two had to be working together on that. My next one is Huberto continues to work on getting his points per game right up while being great defensively. You know what? I've been really impressed with him defensively. Dude, that game that he saved the game on mm-hmm. Saturday against the Canucks. Mm-hmm. That was unbelievable. I, I really liked him defensively. He's been really responsible in his own end. Uh, there's you could there is still glimpses of that Florida system in the back of his mind, right? Like there's times where you'll see him like not fully check a guy or just kind of like shrug it off and let him skate in. But from what he's been doing and his numbers back it up, he's been really good defensively for the Flames this year. His points per game rate keeps going up. It's a mm-hmm. kind of slow burn, but like I'm kind of getting sick and tired of all the people blaming losses on him. It's kind of ridiculous. It's not not kind of ridiculous. It is ridiculous. More than one way to contribute. Yeah, on face value, you want to look at points in the score sheet. But that that play on Saturday against Vancouver, that was a big time play. That, oh, yeah. literally, that literally like solidified the two points that night. My New Year's resolution is uh, just for Nikita Zadorov to continue being the best defenseman in the NHL. <laughs> I, dude, like we were literally sitting here getting roasted last year, being like, Zadorov is an animal. And people are like, you analytics nerd, like you need to stop. Like he's a giveaway <laughs> machine. It's like, no. No, the guy has stepped up to another level this year, and I adore him. Okay, isn't he awesome? I like, dude. The way he's did you see the way he was skating last night in Winnipeg too? Oh yeah, just like how do you move that well when you're that big? Six six two like two thirty five, and he's hopping up in the rush like almost every freaking chance he gets. He is a foot taller than me, basically a foot taller than <laughs> me, and I don't That's- even move that well. My next one is. End the Lucic experiment in the top six and move oh. Ruzicka back up to that spot. Because why is Adam Ruzicka in the doghouse? Seriously, I don't understand it. He needs to be playing higher up in the lineup. So this is technically two resolutions in the one. Um, the Flames are literally four and one when he scores. He leads the team in points per 60 at even strength and in all situations. He's been using his body so much more too, hasn't he? Because like, that was a big knock that Daryl had on Ruzicka was he didn't use his big frame enough yeah watching him now he, he he's always battling along the boards he's always playing the body first and mm-hmm. yeah I, I i don't understand how a guy like him hasn't stuck around in the top six here lucic hasn't been like too dreadful in the top six i don't i don't think he's been too dreadful but it's also not his spot for the long term if we're in march and Huberto, Kadri, and Lucic are still a thing. I don't yeah. understand where the rationale is there because yeah. as much as he hasn't been terrible next to them objectively, they've looked somewhat decent. They've also can't play defense. They get hemmed in their own zone every time they're on the ice together. Yeah. They've been on the ice for a lot more goals against than goals for. Um, and it's like, okay, like time to kind of maybe – I don't know, make a deal at the deadline of significance without using the first rounder this summer. That might be, that's my next resolution. Try to do something that would make this team better without giving up your first rounder in this summer's draft. Because I swear to God, if you do that, I am going to be so heated. <laughs> like Calm, calm, collected, and optimistic Raja would be down in the dumps. <laughs> so for the love of God, do not trade. Our first rounder this summer. That's two resolutions in one. Make a deal with the <laughs> deadline and do not trade the first rounder. <laughs> I guess the next resolution is stop hitting the post and uh, bury your chances because we wouldn't be where we are right now if every shot attempt that went off the iron actually went into the net. Mm-hmm. Like, I swear to God, if every one of those shot attempts resulted in a goal this season – we wouldn't be sitting here complaining about the goals for stat. No, we wouldn't. I think back to that Edmonton game. Like I was, I was at the Edmonton game. So many posts, like so many opportunities. The puck just doesn't want to find a way in the net. That Backlund one with four seconds left. I could literally... you imagine? Could you imagine he scores that? Like, oh my god. 
I... First of all, when do the Flames ever score a goal within a minute left when they need one? There, yeah. th- there's another one. There's another New Year's resolution. For the Flames to score when they pull the goalie. Yeah, play play like the mature team that you are and actually grind it out in the third period when you're down. Do it. You know, I, I was worried about coming up with resolutions for this, but now that I'm just sitting here talking about it, there's so many. There's, like, they there's, so, <laughs> like, there's so easy. There's so many things I want changed. Oh, my Lord. Like, dude, we're averaging, like, three posts a game. I swear, if this was, like, a noted stat... Like, how many posts you hit? Is it a noted stat? If it is, and someone knows if that's even recorded, let me know. Because I'd love to write a post on that. Um, But literally, like, we're averaging at least three a game. It's like, if those go in, we would be exceeding the goals for stat right now in comparison to last year. Yeah. Yeah, we would. All of those went in. Like, Tyler Toffoli would have, like, 30 goals right now. (laughs) (laughs) What? He, he'd be chasing math. He'd be chasing Matthews if he didn't hit posts. Like, oh god, I, I just, I can't. <laughs> it's like my heart sinks every time I hear that ding. Like, <laughs> oh, god, just do score, finish your chances. You know who help you bury your chances? On all accounts, let's pray. Matthew Coronado. My next resolution is that the kid signs in this. Yeah, season. yeah, I'm. I'm really excited for him. Uh, he's got that clutch gene too, right? Like you saw the goal uh, from yeah. Was that earlier this week? Last week doesn't really was, matter, but yeah, was earlier this week he just roofed it. Like he just to tie it. the game with like what a minute left, something like that. Something like that. God, the Flames could freaking use that in the lineup. Matthew Coronado has been a direct address <laughs> to a team need since we drafted him. And he continues to be the root cause of the issue of having no depth around your top guys. Oh, Matthew, bro. I know you're probably like sitting in your dorm right now at Harvard, probably watching us. If I swear to God, he watches us on TV and goes, they need me. Because in his mind, he's got to look at it like, hey, like this team's pretty solid. Can you use some scoring? Matthew Cardano knows scoring. how to score. Yeah. He knows how to score. Um, <laughs> Seems like a good fit. It does. It does. <laughs> Sign the contract, Matthew. Just do it. Just Matthew. I like, dude, please, for the love of God, sign the contract. I cannot deal with another set of Flames fans having the anti-American. Oh, he's gonna leave us. PTSD. Because yeah, we still all have it, whether we want to admit it or not. But just sign the contract, please. Just yeah. that, that's gonna be a great day. When it will be. Decides. It will be. That'll, that'll be an exciting day. Next resolution. Just make the playoffs. Just do it. This is going to be a very, very stressful end if we don't. You, you've gotten yourself to a spot where it's going to be a battle, right? Like, yeah. every every night, games are going to mean something now. That's mm-hmm. just the spot that you've put yourself in. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, battling within that like a point between three teams and the Kraken Oilers and Flames, like it's going to be a, like, we're going to be sweating one out down the stretch here this year, for sure. Last year it was like three teams that were just going at it. This year it's like six. This year it's the entire freaking division. It's getting yep. comfortable. So bury your chances, score more goals. You'll win more games. Yep. Um, I, I got another one here. Um, I, I, I was just doing some thinking. And my one of my New Year's resolutions is uh, for Michael Stone to shoot more and play on the second power play. Because mm. I just think back to last season, that L.A. road trip that they had, or West Coast road trip, where he was on the second power play, and he was just unleashing bombs. Like bombs. That was one where he scored uh, against Anaheim and then another one in Seattle. We need the power play to start working. Why not? Throw them back out there. Just let them start firing pucks at the net again. Honestly, just just have them have them blasting. Just like that meme. They're just like <laughs> be the meme, Michael. Be the meme, <laughs> and just fire literally everything you see. Right, <laughs> even if it is a crowded lane. Winnipeg scored two goals last night on account of the crowded lane. Just so- by throwing it. Oh God, Rick Bonus hockey is so annoying, bro. Oh my yeah. lord. <laughs> 
literally gave me round one trauma from like last. Like, this is oh, ridiculous. Yeah. They are scoring goals the exact same way. <laughs> we keep getting posts. Like I was just sitting there, I was like, this is not ideal. Um, it felt like a game out of the Dallas series last night. Oh yeah, dude. Like just yeah. like, tight, tight checking. Two defensive teams just like trying to. Oh, that was yeah, painful. Um. Now, my next question, this is a question for you that will lead into okay. your question. Do you think Brad Tree Living gets extended this summer? I don't know. That is so tough to judge. Like It's January, and there is radio silence on that front. Not many people even know he's even a freaking UFA. Like, not many people even no, know yeah. the last year of his deal. Um, I'm going to go with no. I my New Year's resolution is a change in leadership in the GM spot because I think that's what we're what it's trending to. You know that that's a tough one though. Like seeing with the off season that he just went through, like like <laughs> losing two players, bringing in two new huge players. Do you think that ownership just, lets him walk right as he's like starting this new era? I feel like I just feel like it's gotten to the point where. It, see, my biggest fear with the whole thing is that they're going to hire someone worse than Brad to take over. <laughs> that's, like, very that's, the part, that's the part that I'm like, you look at the track record, I'm like, oh, God, they're going to they're gonna hire Jay Feaster 2.0, aren't they? <laughs> Selfishly, I feel like I want a new voice. And yeah, that's, that's the thing, right? Like, it's been so long, and it's just been mediocrity for so long. It's just been and, mid. Like, it's just... Yeah. And even this year, it's feeling like mid if they don't pick it up, which is like, this is why I don't understand also why fans on Twitter have this sense of entitlement to want to attack top guys when they're <laughs> not the best top line in the last 30 years. Because A, not a lot of, no other team has been able to replicate that for that extended period of time. On face value, it's like, hey, he did a very good job in salvaging a situation that looked very dire. Yeah. But it's also like his past decision making led to the situation even transpiring. Yeah, absolutely, it- right? And and we we always talked about that that oh no, like Gaudreau left, oh no, Kachuk left. You let this happen. You had both of those contracts expiring in the same off season. You just wanted to bridge the guys. You never took it upon yourself to lock up your superstars. Yeah, that is something that we've always preached. So yeah, like I, I'm gonna lean towards no on that one. I, I'm leaning towards no too because I don't know. I just feel like I feel like ownership wants to see how the season ends, right? Mm-hmm. If we make the playoffs and we somehow win a round this year, I think he'll come back. Yeah. yeah, I think he stays. If we yeah. make the playoffs and we get swept in he's round gone. one, he's gone. That's where I see it. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you there. My next resolution is don't draft another defensive forward in the second round. <laughs> Nothing against William Stromgren and Topi Roney, but if you've seen those guys, have you seen those guys at the World Juniors? I have. I, I haven't actually. I've seen Stromgren. I've, yeah. I, I, that Topi Rooney or whatever, I, I, <laughs> I haven't even, I didn't even see him play for Finland. He was unnoticeable on the ice. He's if like he even did. 52 in the quarterfinals. Ah, so ah. maybe maybe instead of prioritizing defense through prospects, prioritize goal scoring. And I don't yeah. know, if you want defense. Plenty of free agents are good at defense. You know, I I always say I like watching the World Juniors. I actually hate it. <laughs> just get to watch the all these other teams' prospects that are just absolutely sick and so good at hockey. And then you look at the flame side of it. When was the last time the Flames had more than like two guys at the World Juniors, and they weren't like third or fourth liners? I feel like the last time I actually enjoyed watching Flames prospects at the World Juniors was that bubble, like the 2021 tournament, because Pelche, uh, Zeri, Wolf, were right, all there, right. right. So just, you're actually able to watch your top of the crop prospect. But like, Wolf didn't even play in that tournament. That was Spencer Knight that was at the helm. Like, I don't know. It's just so frustrating. Like, and then you look at 
the guys from like the Winnipeg system. Like Winnipeg already has a great forward group. And then they got the guys on USA like Chaz Lucius and Rucker McGrory who actually make a difference out there. Then that yeah. Jimmy Snuggerud from the US, yeah. who's a blues prospect, I think. Like mm-hmm. when are the Flames gonna draft some guy that's like this? Like he just makes a difference on the ice. It's so depressing knowing that Matthew Coronado was an overager for this year's tournament because I, I, we would have literally watched him light it up. Absolutely. That USA team would like be good with him. Oh, just that game tonight is going to be crazy. I can't wait, dude. I I'm can't so wait, wrong. dude. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's going to be a good game. My next resolution is, for the love of God, extend Elias Lindholm this summer. <laughs> for the love of God. I don't care what it takes. Just no, me too. Uh, like, Send bring him. that guy back. Let him stay here, please. <laughs> uh, name a captain heading into the 23-24 season. I like that uh, one. We need accountability, clearly. This group, this new group needs it. No. So, we took a gamble with four A's this season. Name a leader for next year, please. Have you noticed that Eric Francis just hasn't been traveling with Ryan Leslie on the road? I have. So my next resolution is thank you for blocking me, by the way, Eric. I appreciate it. Change the culture in the way the media covers this team because it is so toxic. Every single it's, time it's I listen horrible. to a presser, it's horrible. That's, uh, yeah. And like going into broadcasting, like that's something that I want to change like so bad. Like just watching reporters do stuff like what Francis does just makes me cringe. Like I actually. Oh, so cringy. Uh, and it's so I, bad. But yeah, I feel like that's every resolution I had written down that we just covered. Yeah, I I mean we kind of just wanted to improve the whole team and pretty much everything about the team, the atmosphere, the media, the team, the goaltending, the defense, the scoring. It seems like everything could use a little work this new year. <laughs> the thing that's kind of nice though is that we're still in a spot that's salvageable. Just for the love of God, create yep. separation for yourself. Go out and win games. Just do you do, do you want to end it off with the uh, the three stars of the week kind of thing? Like we'll do sure. like three stars over the last five games or so. I'm gonna say my first star. We're gonna go top down. Starting at the first star. Okay. You know what? I wrote an article on him recently, and I'm very impressed with him. Rasmus Anderson. Hey, okay, yeah, I've I've liked his game a lot actually. Um. I just think with the void that Shillington has left in terms of needing offense to have that rush game from the back end, Anderson has been excellent in that regard. He's got 27 points so far this year. He's top five in time on ice per games played in the NHL. Yeah, he's he's been playing close to 25 minutes a night. He's up there with Kale McCarr, Adam Fox, Eric Carl. Hedman. Victor Hedman, like yeah. seriously, like it's just we can talk about the defense and all that sort of thing, but like just this week alone, he did generate quite a bit. Okay, I like that pick. I'm gonna go with that for my first pick, and then I'll figure out the next two. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> uh, my my first star over the last five games. You know, I if it was like the last ten or so. I was going to have Dubé in my top three just because I I did like his point production that he was putting up there for a bit. Mm. But I think at number one, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Tyler Toffoli. He's been scoring a lot of goals lately. So I my number one is Toffoli for sure. Like, yeah. Well, Toffoli is my number two. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, he He's done literally everything you've asked of him. I picked him up in fantasy yesterday, so... Uh, <laughs> yes, I love the bully. We got on here and we were basically like crying out of happiness when we heard about the trade. It was literally on Valentine's Day. So just repeat that. Make another trade on Valentine's Day, Brad. You kind of have to. Your job's kind of on the line. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and he's one of those guys that hasn't been talked about too much, but he's been really solid, right? Like, he's been really. He's he's done everything that this team and this city has asked of him like since the start of this year. Like he is playing his role, he's doing what he needs. And if he didn't hit the post so often, he'd have thirty goals right now. <laughs> it's crazy. He'd be in the running for the freaking rocket, dude. Um, yeah. So that's my second star. 
All right. Uh, for my number two, I'm going to go with Jacob Markstrom mm-hmm. at number two. Uh, he's really improved and kind of fallen back into the Jacob Markstrom that we know, uh, especially in that game against Edmonton. Didn't get any run support. He was so good. That save on Puyarvi, the dome was buzzing after that for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I've really liked what Markstrom's done, and he seems to be falling back to his old ways and his old habits. So that's a good sign for sure. So I'm gonna have him at number two. This is hard. My for my third one, I'm gonna go with Mackenzie Weger. Okay. Defensively, he's been unbelievable the last five games. He scored his first as a flame, had a multi-point game on that yeah. New Year's game on Saturday. He even almost scored a beauty last night off that dish from Hoovy. Hellebuck Hall- 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 Yeah. I wish, dude. That would have been gorgeous. Could you imagine that connection? Like, if that got going, that Hoover oh. to Uyghur, like, oh, man. They would have just needed that one, and you already know Uyghur would have been like, hey. Oh, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. I can, I can jump up on the play and pot them now. Like, <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Weegs just because freaking love the guy. Honorable mention to Markstrom, but I feel like I kind of wanted to be a little bit different and not picking the same player. So Yeah, I'm no, for him. sure. All right, my uh, my third one. I'm just gonna do it for a little bit of fun. But Nikita Zadorov is coming in at number three for me. Um, <laughs> we already talked about him earlier. There's not much more I need to say. The guy's an absolute beauty, and uh, yeah. I'm so happy he's back here in Calgary. <laughs> too bad, me too. Uh, I think that's a good way to end it off. Absolutely. Uh, I think our last New Year's resolution is that hopefully by the end of the calendar year, we're at a thousand subscribers. So go subscribe. Uh, we're hoping that content starts coming out more seamlessly this year too. After holidays, we'll get back to our weekly posting schedule as much as possible. Um, Noah and I are both also in school, so kind of need to balance that with this as well. So hopefully this year we can generate more content for you guys. Talk to, I guess, more people in the A media world or players, depending on who are, you know, who would be. Fingers Fingers crossed, crossed. right? I mean, we'll see what happens. But thank you for watching and go like and subscribe. Yeah, thanks for listening, everybody.